traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Good afternoon, everyone. Basil Chapman here, sitting for Larry Pesavento. Larry's either at or he's on his way to Las Vegas. He's going to do some live trading demonstrations there. It should be fantastic. Anyway, so I'm taking this hour down, down three, almost four dollars at 33,804. So I want to discuss a couple of things and then we'll go to the commodities and we'll look at the timing. Uh, that instruments that I use in terms of uh, what we're looking at, what we, what we can expect over this this coming week, what levels that we need to monitor very closely, we'll do that. In fact, I'll do that right now because the E mini is just about to test the key support. We've just look in the, this is the one minute chart. I don't want to go all through all the techniques I did in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour earlier this morning. I drawn this in for a time lapse using a price uh, symmetry. And I'd shown that there was a, a low around about 9.30 or so in the E-mini. And the rally. I'm always expecting a, a price movement of four peaks going from peak A to the next peak is B. The next peak is C. It's got nothing to do with A to B equals C to do. It has to do with just alphabetizing sequentially uh, and, and grading, basically. I, I've got a grading methodology of grading each, each successively higher peak or trough. In this particular case, it ran to a peak D, stalled in a rectangle formation, which very often uh, concludes to breaking the low, which it did, and then it ran for another peak A, B, C1, and then under that it had a peak A, B, C, and then it went to the D. So four, your objective in the Chapman Wave is to go from a buy signal to, to get you upgraded, whatever you're following from a buy signal to a buy mode. Implication being, there should be four higher peaks. Peak D, then other things can happen. Bam, we got this M-shaped pattern, and then whoosh, comes down, and we broke the support, and then it just continued going down. I used 9 over 14 period moving averages. Look what happened. Crosses negative right there, and it stayed negative, 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 negative. Hasn't changed to positive yet. And then all of a sudden, just over there, it changes to positive briefly. So you've gone from the crossover at 4160 uh, in the E-mini to 4147, what is it? Uh, 43. Uh, 43, 44, and it crosses positive. So that was uh, everything there said. As long as it remained negative, you could stay negative. It's a, a process by web, whereby you can stay in a position way longer than you ever thought you could based on this one technique alone. And then it crosses green, then goes back to pink, and I drew in parallel lines. This is so easy to draw a trend line. You just take your, your, your pointer and you pick a high, and then you go to the, the highs of the wicks of any bar that pops up and that could make a trend line. And there it is, three times hit, almost like bar symmetry in terms of time. And at the bottom, I just click and I go parallel and it went parallel beautifully, beautifully. And we, we held the low that was made at about 12, uh, 20, no, 12, 15. And then ran peak A, peak B, crosses green again. And it's still green. And right, just as we're talking for the last three minutes, it's gone red. Went to that peak D. What do you expect in, in a buy signal to buy mode? At least a peak, uh, peak D. So let me just scroll this across right there. We're done with that. And we get, now it's going to be pulling back because it crossed under the trend line and went negative. Normally, I would just immediately start drawing a left side, right side price time match. And that says buy about, uh, let me just give you, I, I don't want to do this quickly. It's silly. But buy 120. Uh, if 41.46 is taken out, that 41.44, will again become a, a support level, but I haven't drawn it in. So what I did want to show you is that in the 10-minute chart, look at this. This is just a very simple technique. There's nothing extraordinary here. But what I do talk about a lot is rectangles. In a rectangle formation, 
uh, if I can find it right, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Rectangle formation. There are two rectangles, and I do this in webinars that are on on, on my service there. If you go to the opening call, if you become a subscriber, you can go to those webinars. There are oodles of them, and they discuss in great detail all these different techniques. And I talk about the long, narrow rectangle and the large rectangle. Long, ne narrow rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience because it keeps bumping into the resistance. And then, oh, you think it's going to break out, and then it turns around and goes down to the support. You think it's going to break down, and it turns around and goes back up and just bounces up and down and up and down. If it then goes above the trend line resistance at a peak, D, E, or F, and turns down, watch the midpoint. If there is a horizontal line in that midpoint between the upper resistance and the uh, support, and it takes it out, after you've gone to the D, E, or F, be careful because you can quite easily go right underneath the previous support and then go back. And what happens when it goes back into the rectangle is important. The large rectangle, we'll talk in, in, in different contexts in a moment. But in the meantime, look at this. Can you believe that from Thursday, this is, uh, let me just double check. That was on the 20th. 20th was, oh, is that 28th or 20? Why well, you call me 28, right? It has to be 20. Yeah, on the 20th, 20th of April was Thursday. Look at this. It set the parameters of 41.59 and 41.33, something like that. And then it stuck within that. You got your peak A, B, C, D. You did all this sort of thing. And then it broke above that trend line resistance to an E took out the midpoint support line. And then what is the rule? If it takes it out, there's a really good chance that it's not only break the low, but it's going to test it. And then it will try to get back in. What happens after that? That becomes a midpoint resistance. Well, it went under it. Then it went peak A, B, C, D, stopped on that line, came back, and then it went peak A, B, alternate currency, D, E, F, and a G, unusual G, out of the range, and then comes back in, goes to the midpoint, that dashed line, takes it out, goes to a trough D, and now we've got a peak A and a retracement. So all of that, those are techniques I'll show you as we move along. I wanted to show you that now if you're not used to my techniques. So I spoke about the 914 crossover. Well, look at the Dow. Um, since the width of that moving average, the, the slower one over the fast one is so wide, it gives you an extraordinary uh, level of support. It doesn't say that it can soar to high, higher highs. It just says that's your support. And until that nine crosses under the 14, it won't really break down. Until that happens, it can go lower, but the breakdown occurs when that occurs, when, when the nine goes pink and underneath the 14. But at this particular point, you've still got residual strength. And so that's your peak D, your fourth highest peak. You did that back in February of, uh, uh, on the 14th of February this year at 34,331, came tumbling down to 31,429, trough D, and then ran all the way back to a peak D. And now you've, so look at this, after everything that's happened, could you believe that we've got, including this very minute, could be a change by the end of the day at four o'clock, but look, doji candle, doji candle, doji candle, doji candle, doji candle, almost a doji candle five doji candles and today could be a six after the peak d that's that's telling you that there was internal strength that could change and i think it will change but not right now i'll be back basil chapman sending you for larry Currencies, commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman here. And let's just go through some of the charts that I was asked about in the Tiger Den. Uh, Platinum was one. PL, at PLs of the Platinum Continuous Contract. Uh, monthly chart has gone to a peak C. But just have a look at this. This is very interesting because Platinum is being used more and more. Made a peak D way back in 2011. Uh, this is a continuous contract, so prices get smoothed out. But it was at that point, it was 2050. Slumps all the way down to the low of, of March of 2000. And there we go, 20, I believe it was right there, uh, to... 586. I mean, this is 75%. Uh, okay. Then it runs up to a peak A, B, C, and then stalls. I couldn't really uh, call this a peak C1, C2. It has the characteristic. A C2 says it just missed a D, and the technicals were strong enough for it to, to, for it to get there, but it didn't. I've just left it like this. But basically, we are looking at the potential for the monthly chart to be making a cup formation. And a cup formation says that you have on the way down, you've made lower lows, usually lower lows and lower highs, but you're making lower lows, and then you find a, a, a base, and then you start to move with higher highs and higher lows. That's exactly what's happening now. So the monthly chart, the MACD is improved, the nine period is over the 14, the stochastic is not so great at 53%, and the on-balance volume is very weak. So the price is moving higher. I would prefer if all the technicals concur, but on a shorter term basis, You've got the weekly chart making this cup formation. The technicals on the left side are not as good as they were on the right, but it's still a pretty darn good move. But this is the one we're looking at. And I did an analysis of this based on Chapman Wave methodology. This is a bar symmetry. And I had that peak F that was made in uh, the platinum uh, back on the 11th of January at 51.25 comes all the way down to the 900s, and then it starts to move to the right, and it's making higher highs and higher lows. And my eye said that using a particular candle for a midpoint, because the trough couldn't be the plumb line right at the bottom of the 27th of February, it just didn't, it looked imbalanced to do that. So that's where you have to use other techniques rather than just pure mathematical left side number of bars to the left will equal the number of bars to get back to the same price. Didn't work. But I moved it, and I moved it correctly because to the exact um, day, the 21st of April, that was on Friday, the market, the, uh, copper, platinum, sorry, platinum popped up, went to a leg F, 
with a very strong line period over the 14. The MACD is good. Stochastic's fabulous at 92%. I love over 80%, but I really love, I like over 80%. I love over 90%, and it's a 92%. The um, relative strength, this little gray line, is starting to fail. So this is saying it's overbought because the on-balance volume, the blue line, is is that's the only thing I treat as overbought. All the rest, when you're over 92% in the stochastic, unless you pop over 80% and go back down immediately, that's a very negative thing. But if you flatten out over 90%, I love that. That's what you should, all the textbooks say, overbought nonsense. That's what you want. That's what you want for higher prices. And um, you've got that here. And that just says that on a shorter term basis, 1.099 right now, in leg F, probably a peak F today, says that this whole area of one point, I'm going to just click it because I can't see, 1.087 to 1.067 should be very strong support. There's a chance that it goes a little bit lower, but it should quickly get back there. And one of the reasons is, look at the number of bars on the left side that you saw at that level. So that just says you've got some support there. If there is a, an acceleration with a move that takes you very sharply under 1.050 in the next week, that says, for now, platinum's done. It just needs a breather. It's had a spectacular move. I hope that helps you. There was a question there. Um, on the upside for platinum, what you've got is looking out. And I, I wouldn't treat this as a very short-term objective, but looking out, the high that was made back in March, I think it was, yes, March of 2022 at 1200 uh, at 1200 Remember, I'm using a continuous contract. So let's just say the high that was March, um, in the monthly chart, that it would be an upside target. I like to go left side to right side and then see what is on the left as an obstruction or a resistance, and that's the level that I'd be looking at. And the other thing is, just in terms of FIB numbers, a 138 would be uh, in the 1.044 area. Okay, I hope that helped you. And just a very short term, if you want, I, you didn't ask me for it, but I'll do this because it's right there. Let me just go to Windows, going to 120 minute chart, right, right. Hello, anybody? Yep, there it is. There it is. Um, going to go to that. Okay, I can't tell all too much going on right now, but I can tell you that um, the 120 minute chart looks somewhat overbought and it looks like it wants to pull back 1.055, 1.080 oh, is the near term support. Under that, 1.055 is the 200 period exponential moving average. So between that and 1.68, I'd say 1.068, I should say. Am I right? I'm not used to all these numbers yet. 1.068, yes, correct. So that's what I'd be looking at as, a, as a support. And resistance is short term is at about 1.15, 1.15 to 1.1. Five, three. All right. Hope that helps you. Next question I had was, could I look at the QQQs? I'll do it both ways. If you look at the NQ, which is the NQ, which is the um, continuous contract, I like to use that because I can get monthly charts. I can get long-term looks at it, even though uh, it's trading. Uh, this is a continuous contract. Now, the reason why I haven't got a, a down arrow after this peak D is I have to wait because the nine is still very strong. It has closed under the 14 period moving average a couple of times. But to, to get a down arrow, what I like to do is to make a measurement of this left side high that was made back on about April the 3rd or so. And then the one that was made around about April the 16th. I'll just check the dates in a moment. So that was April, the April high of the 4th of the fourth at 13,348, and then the high under it, just under it, at 13,298 on the 18th. Look at this. The MACD was weak. The stochastic was very weak. On balance volume was weak. The red to strength, a little gray line over there, was starting to turn down. But it's only probably tomorrow or Wednesday if the nine period crosses negative under the 14 period that I'd say you've got a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Let me just tell you what that is right here. H pattern. 
right here. So I like to look at three core patterns besides the rectangles and everything else because these make up the rectangles. So straight line up or down, cup formation, arch formation, a mix of one and three or one and two. This is one and three where it goes to an H, fails at a peak A or B, takes out that left side low. In this case, it's very positive if it takes out that left side high. So what am I looking at here? I'm looking at the arch formation. We call it the dreaded H because if it takes it out, it can go a lot lower. So we've got this H right here. And we'll see if it takes out the low. In this case, I'm using continuous contract. And if the low of uh, the 13th, 12,925 is taken out on a closing basis, you can expect there's even a possibility of a one-to-one -one of the arch formation uh, going down low. In that case, you to 12,800. We aren't there yet. So I've spoken about the rectangle formation that these can actually morph, and I'll talk about that as soon as we return. Basil Chapman, sitting for Larry's Hour, Dow's up three, S&P's down four. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we just looked at the uh, platinum chart. Doesn't this left side look exactly like that platinum chart? So listen, there's a, t a technique that I call the Chapman Wave inside. There we go. This is an instant restart right here. Within the inside bars of the P from a peak D, within three bars, we get a new leg A to the upside, or it could be an E slash A. But there's, a, there's just one of the modification I make to this. <clears throat> if there's almost a parallel high with that left side peak D, I almost always take it as a potential for a peak A. So it doesn't have to make the new high. I prefer if it does. If it doesn't make that take out the left, the, the low after that peak D, then that's really good. Here it is sitting. How important is the 200 period moving average? 
really important. Look at this. It was a breakdown level in SWAV, which is uh, a stock called uh, Short Wave Medical, Inc. And, and then it became resistance. It was a big spike up to it back in February, and then it failed. And then it made this beautiful, I love these patterns. This is, you remember, we were looking at the cup and the arch. Look at this. I mean, this is spectacular. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. This this bowl formation says prices can go a lot higher. You can have consolidations within it, but as long as you keep making higher highs and basically not higher lows, but decent lows that are, are after you've made your starting point, peak A, B, C, the whole, say, the high of B or something like that. That is really good. <clears throat> I'm not going to do a left side, right side price time at right now, other than to say, uh, now why not? I will. <clears throat> SWAV is the symbols down six at 280.37. Friday it made a new recovery high. Uh, all time high is up in the three, uh, just about 320. Now let me show you what I do. I like to go step by step. So normally, without that big move on Friday, I would have said, a left side, I want to bump up against this Grand Canyon slope on the left side. And I want to go there. And where would I, if I can't use it visually, I'm over here now, right? I have no idea what's going to happen. But on this side, it says to me, to go to that level when you're down in the 170s or 80s, and that's just a big ask. To go here on the on the right side, I would have to say, no, I can't do that. That would be very aggressive. So I like to go a little more and then say, I'm using this this bar right here. And in a way, it's a little, it's unfair to say I'm using this bar because I just, it isn't even a, a cup formation. It's within the cup or below it down. So I'm using the high that was made the 10th of November at 277.95. And uh, I go up against the, the cliff on the left side. So I go a couple of bars back and then I go to the right. And I say, I'm looking for a particular candle, a very indecisive candle. So I find one right here, and then I go click. And all I have to do, it's easy on TradeStation. Some others don't have quite, they don't have the arch, the, the semicircles that you can draw, which is a pity. I, it's, most do, but no, I wouldn't say most do. Most don't, but some do, and it's great. You don't have to. I could just do a straight line there and then another straight line. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the right side. I make it green because I'm anticipating certain things happen. That could be the upside target. Then I look to the left and I say, wow, that if I had to take this particular trough here and move it to the right, you know, that is just way too aggressive. So I say that's just not going to work, not for – not. Not in this particular instance. And this is where the mathematical formula fails. And all I can say is, well, that's just the way it is. So I have to do it. I don't do it just visually, although I'm a very visual person. I do it with particular candles. I use the diagonal, where this diagonal Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line. On the way up, it's usually light green dash, just so you can identify. These are things I do for subscribers that they can see very well. And then I use this particular match right here. And I say, okay, if this is the case, then we should try to get to the level. I can't draw it right now because I'll be, I'll be looking to see where it is. So let me just say what I do is I, I take it to where this, what I consider the match from the plumb line I've chosen or midpoint a mirror image, and I just, for now, I'm just going to extend it to the right and see where it goes. So it says extend right there. Okay, now I'll move to the right. Here we go, we go, we go, we go. And it's not quite right because it would have been right there. The bar that I chose was right here, this indecisive uh, little tiny candle. And that said, by the, let me click this there, by the, 25th of April, we should be testing this high, which is 277.95. Well, it turns out on Friday, it spiked way above that. Uh, on the weekend, I would have said, okay, now I've got to go to the next level. And then I would just draw the same thing. I'd do it like this. 
I, try, I don't always use the same midpoint because things have changed. So the midpoint could be very, very, uh, very different. But I've done that. And then I would do this and say, okay, is this going to hit that next level of resistance? And lo and behold, what do we have? It got there. Uh, it hasn't got there yet. So that says by the 27th, we should be able to hit that level. And that level is then, and this is all I do. I go step by step, 308, 309, oops, sorry, 300.11. And today's, uh, um, Friday's high was 296.80. So the question is, where could I add? <clears throat> I would say you're in it. You're lucky to be in it because I saw this in Investors Business Daily and I loved it. And then it kind of, I, I, I lost track of it on that big move down. And I just, I haven't even looked at it for about three weeks. And out of the, and I had already drawn in this uh, 200 period moving average with the Chapman Wave inside era. Um, right, with an with instant restart. In the meantime, back at the ranch, that's what I'm looking at now. You've missed it. I've, you, you haven't missed it. You've got it. I, for subscribers, like it very much. Shock, Shockwave Medical Inc. Just it's in the in the right sector at this particular time. So I would because we we don't have a position. I would like to start a position and just have patience and try to get it in the two fifties somewhere there. Two fifty five is the forty period moving average. Wow, that's twenty two points. That's ten percent correction. I don't see it doing it right now. So what I'm going to say to you is that you've got a small position. I don't want you to get another small position when that second small position could pull back to almost your entry point. But if you've got it much, much lower down, I would start my second position as a split position. And I tipped her in right here at 279 because I'm expecting with the strength that I'm looking at right now, there's a chance that it tries to get into the 300s. So you could treat that as a potential short-term buy that says, if it gets to a certain point, I'm actually going to take that off and try to get that same position lower down. Or say, now I've got a great cost average, because that's now the plan, because you're trying to build longer-term positions. I like it. It's only B, leg B in the weekly chart. My target is later on in the summer for it to get to 320. 320.54 uh, was the high the week of the 28th of, of October. It's in the right area. And yes, I could give this an alternate account monthly saying this is F slash B. I'm sorry, E slash. Yes, F slash B. But in the meantime, I love the action that's going on. So that's the way I would look at it. Just a little nibble here as part of your second position, and then we'll talk about it a little later in the week. Dow's up 18, S&P's down 2.5. Basil Chapter sitting for Larry Pesamento's hour. I'll be back in a moment, and there's a lot to talk about. I've got more questions coming in. Be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi right, folks, so I was talking about bar symmetry. This is a really great example. From this bar right here on the, at 10.50 in the E-mini at 41.50, 150, 50, 3.50, we pull back to, I expanded that is A, B, that's C, this is D, right here is D. Uh, we went to a trough D with a 41.39 round number low at 12.20. Look, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars to the downside. And to get to that exact level at uh, 41.53.50, we went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth bar. What's the height? Uh, 41.53.25. Missed it by 25 cents, but it's a 10-minute bar, so it's ongoing. And I like to draw in these, uh, and that's beautiful. Here's your plumb line, the midpoint right here. Look, look, look. Uh, let me draw it in this way. Here's your plumb line. This is the bar. And that bar low is a mirror image from the left side to the right side. Isn't that fascinating? The MACD turned up. Stochastic is beautiful. 93% on balance volume is good. So how this stales and this, this now, this midpoint that I draw in, this has been in for a long time at 41, uh, 48. That's your key support now. And the nine just crossed positive. So that's a good sign. But in the meantime, we're stuck in a range. Look, this is since Thursday. Just at about the close on Thursday, <clears throat> we're still within the same parameters. Fascinating. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, okay. So with that said, let me go to back here. So the question was the QQQ. So in the QQQ, what we're looking at is a, a cup formation can turn into an arch formation because the sine wave goes from one point down and back again. Then it can go from one point from the low to the high and then back to the low again. <clears throat> and it can keep doing that within the rectangle. So what I normally do is I grab the outer points, 3, 2, 1, 6, 3, and 3, 11 uh, on the downside. And I say, okay, the cues are stuck in a rectangle formation until they break either way. Um, they just stuck, and they can stay there for a long time, meaning another couple of days. Well, all I can say is that if the Qs start to take out 311 to 309, that's key support in the very short term, there's a problem if it closes under that, because that's going to get the nine period <clears throat> to start moving out of the 14. It hasn't yet. It's still showing strength. And in the weekly chart, we've just got like a carpish pattern, and there's your handle, just a, a sideways rectangle. These often have a little pop to the upside and then break to the downside significantly. So that's what I'm looking at just in terms of chart patterns. Next question came in, uh, coinciding to uh, in the den, uh, natural gas stealthy strength. Yes, <clears throat> I actually like this very much because for the first time you're starting to see, let me just take a drink of water for that voice. <clears throat> and those are what I wanted to see in natural gas. 
I didn't want to see a spike that fails. I didn't want to see little tiny bars that moved up like we saw before. I wanted something that said, as we are awaiting the stochastic to get to 80%, it's at 73% right now. I want to see some kind of, a, I'll do it in a lower down, a cup formation form, holding the nine period moving average above the 14, which it hasn't done. It's still pink, but it's very close to turning up. The weekly chart still looks absolutely horrible, but I like the action here because it says finally for the last week and a half, you've seen rallies with disbelief and then they give back a chunk. That creates even greater disbelief. But if there is a leg B in the natural gas continuous contract above 2563, the high that was made on the 18th of April, that starts leg B. That stochastic will almost certainly get to at least 76 or 77 percent, probably 81 percent. The MAGD is already good. Now you've got the 9 over the 14, if that happens, green. You've got the MACD good. You've got the relative strength, yeah, right there at about 50%, about 49%, just starting to improve. And all of a sudden, I've got something that says we have built a really strong base in the 2.3, 2.1 area for natural gas. That's what you want to see. I'm not going to say, oh, the 50 period moving average of 2.76, that's my target. I don't do that. <clears throat> I do say on the left side, if there is a peak, which there isn't, until you get to the 14th of March, uh, yeah, March at 2.981, that's your peak on the left side. We don't have any peaks. It just made lower lows and lower highs, so just all, all the way down to a trough G. So I try, try to do it this way, and then I will produce on the left side. I'll, I'll even start it now to say this is the work that I would do. I wouldn't go to this vertical line trough right here. I'd go to that trough right there, and i say, wow, if that's the case, we could have a nice move, <clears throat> and then by next week, May, early May, we could be seeing a decent rally. But wait a minute, this is natural gas. Why should it rally in May? So I'm just saying I like to go step by step, and what you are looking at at this particular point is that there's, it's building enough strength to try to get to a leg B, and then we'll see whether it turns the 2.40s into some kind of key support level. But it is the wrong time of the year, seasonally, for the natural gas to really be moving much higher. But it is extremely overboard. It can just move that on a purely tactical term. And it, as I say, it hasn't turned positive yet in, in the 9 over the 14. Next question I had was, um, uh, yes. So I, I finished the QQQ. I just want to, I, I can't remember now. I've done it so many times today. So this pattern can just remain going from a cup to an arch to a cup. But if there is a close under this low right here of 312.57, it says just be a warning. It's just your start of a warning. And then I'm probably going to put a down arrow. Normally, I'd put a down arrow, but the nine is still so strong. Yes, it's used up time. I don't want to do a down arrow saying it's in a sell signal when I haven't really got confirmation yet. I need confirmation. So it's still holding really well, stuck in a range. That's fine. This question I had was, uh, Tesla, I wanted to do it in my show, and I didn't see the, uh, the question until I got. So I did this left side, right side price time match when Tesla was somewhere over here. Before, I didn't realize the earnings until later that day uh, that earnings were coming out. And I put in a little X right there. Why? Because I had this dreaded H pattern. Remember the arch formation? Um, and the left side low looked to me from the 13th of March at 163.91. That it would be a target from this peak B going down diagonally with a Chapman wave inside wedge target support line, and that it should take in a measured move from this peak C failure under the 200 period moving average, it should take until today to get to test the 160, what did I say it was three area? Yeah, 163.91. Well, it got there uh, on Thursday, Friday, on Thursday. So it's still very weak, and the question came up. Uh, we, I had a question about, I'd even say three weeks ago, maybe even more. Um, I think it was Jane wanted to know, where could I start a position in Tesla? And I said, I would just wait. I have to say wait. I have no choice. I don't see anything in Tesla just yet. And I'm still going to say wait. So Dow's up 12. S&P is up 2. We've got one segment to go. 
and I'm going to do a couple of things that I, I, I had written down. I'll get to it as soon as we return. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, welcome back. Welcome to the last uh, segment of the show that uh, Larry usually does. So what I wanted to say is the reason why for the QQQ, I'm saying... There's internal strength, but there are enough stocks that are saying to me, something better happen very soon. Look, Microsoft, which is also in the Dow, um, has key support. It's made a peak. It's, it's done exactly what the QQQ has done, except this time it's gone and the H pattern has gone below the left side low. And I usually say if you have two to three bars without getting back to the low, which is 281.64, that could be a serious pullback. Well, this is one bar. And does I don't know where it closes. It's so far as 280.87. So I'm watching it, and it says if it's going to weaken, that the 269, 270 level would be a target by uh, within the next uh, week. If you're looking at Meta, and all of these are coming out with earnings very soon, it's made a peak. G, yes, the G slash C, and the technicals are so far quite good. But it's saying to me it's getting a little toppy short term, and a lot of them are. That, that's that's really the reason why I'm looking at this and saying it's a digestive phase. And one of the reasons why we've taken off some of our long positions in the Dow, but we've kept our core positions and our stock positions, um, is because I'm, we've switched to a short position on the in the S&P because it looks a little bit weaker than the Dow. But the reason being 
It's more, it's kind of insurance, and this is exactly where I'm expecting some digestive phase. But so far, that, that the strength of that nine-period moving average over the 14 has just been excellent. It's telling us that there's still residual strength. And you can see even the QQQ, it hasn't yet crossed negative. Look, that nine period is still over the 14 in the daily chart. Weekly chart is still very strong. I don't want to get in front of this. I don't want to say, oh, this is the time we should have a pullback. No, I'm saying this is where I'm thinking there's some digestive action, but it's held very well. So at the, by the end of the day, if the Dow is, so we've got two hours to go. If the Dow actually moves to about a plus 65, that's really good action by, if it's, uh, oh, it's already two o'clock and it's up uh, 25. That'll be good action going into tomorrow with earnings coming out. <clears throat> I'm watching closely. If the Dow slips under 33,500 this week, that's it's got a little bit of a problem here. And uh, the queues would be 311 is the, the area I'm looking at. Uh, stay tuned. Great programming coming up. And we'll, don't forget, we'll wrap up with Tom O'Brien. Check out the opening call and my webinar coming up. <laughs>